Right, I'm gonna sit here and hope that my neighbour's workmen don't start in the next 20 minutes again because they've been driving me mad. Hi guys, welcome back. So today I wanted to do a little bit of a follow up to the fertility videos that I put out a few weeks ago. Um, I had a lot of questions and a lot of messages sent through um, following on from that which was absolutely amazing. Um, so there are a few questions so I have gone back to like people individually and done some answers but um, there were some that were like a lot of the same question was asked so I thought I would do a little Q&A video around like fertility and our experience today um, and put that together so that anybody can kind of see, follow up and see that. Did any of that make sense? I don't know, my brain has literally gone to mush. But yes, that is what I'm doing today. So I've got questions on my phone here. I'm going to go through those. I'm hoping I'm not going to take forever <laughs> to go through these. Um, so yeah, there's what we're going to do. Um, but yeah, if you like this video, make sure you give it a big thumbs up and don't forget to hit that subscribe button. We are in the middle of like May Madness now, I think. So um, yeah, lots and lots of content going out across the channel, my blog and Instagram as well. So please make sure you're following across all of those. And um, yeah, let's start with some questions. Okay, so something that I was asked, and this was actually around about Mother's Day, because I put up um, a couple of things on Instagram about Mother's Day. Um, and um, and just said like how nice it was that for like the first year in a couple of years I was actually able to like enjoy Mother's Day or like be a part of it in some sense even though like obviously I don't have baby yet um, and I was like it's nice to not like be ruled by the jealousy of the day because I think last year I literally just spent all day <laughs> just didn't go on social tried not to talk to too many people because it was like my best friend's first Mother's Day it was my um, nephew's mum's first Mother's Day so I just wanted to like be completely out of it really and just spend time with my mum um, but yeah so I put something up about that and somebody asked like how do you handle um, the everybody is a mum but me jealousy which is a great question um, and this obviously not just related to Mother's Day it comes for like any part during like the time when you are trying to like get pregnant and you have other people close to you that are been more successful with that have managed to get pregnant and then have babies and they have all of those great moments like there is that jealousy that's there and it's never gonna it's just not gonna go away um so for me one of the big things is like I tried to remove myself from situations that I could where that jealousy would flare so like Mother's Day I just completely took myself off social for the day because I just didn't want to look at all of those posts of people going like yay it's my first Mother's Day or like yeah we're doing this for Mother's Day or like my little one's done this I just didn't want to be like privy to that because I knew it would just set me off um but in other ways as well like I was trying to I guess in a way it's kind of preparing you as well for in case it never happens for you um so things that like I would try and focus on is like yes I'm obviously jealous that you have a baby and you get all of these moments but you know what about all the things that I get to do where I don't have a child that you don't necessarily get to do so I try to focus on the things that would so I try to focus on the things that I really enjoy doing that I knew I wouldn't necessarily be able to do when if when I had a baby um, but also I knew that like my friends struggled to do so things like we could just go to the cinema when we wanted like we could just be like oh let's go see this tonight and not have to worry about like babysitter or anything or we could be like oh well, if we really fancy going for brunch today let's just go and do brunch so we had that freedom and we could go and do things like book Florida and go and do that trip and you know go on holidays and not have to worry about taking kids with us because obviously that then comes with all like other stuff so I try to focus on the things that um were good about the fact that we didn't have a child yet like having that little bit more freedom like we could do what we wanted we could we had that you know we could do we could just do what we wanted I think is what I'm trying to say there um so yes yeah, so I think I was just trying to more than anything prepare myself for the fact that it may not have happened and that was what was going to be my life anyway so I tried to think of the benefits of that um I mean I'm quite lucky in the fact that I do have um family members who don't have children so I've got a couple of sets of aunt and, uncle, aunt and uncles that don't have kids and they have 
obviously from the outside they seem to like have really nice lives like they go on holidays they go away on like weekends away and like they still have really great lives together without kids and that was like a choice that they made so um i could see that you know there is a life there and like there is positives to it so that's what i tried to focus on when i started getting really jealous um it is hard i'm not gonna lie that jealousy is still gonna be there but it's just trying to distract yourself with like yes they have this but i have this and they don't so <laughs> it's it's kind of a balancing act really um okay tips so many people asked me like how did we have any tips on staying sane in that two week wait so um for all of our treatments so ovulation induction and ivf um once you have ovulated you then have to wait for like up to two weeks to see if you've been successful or not so there's a whole two week period where you can't do anything you just have to wait um and it can be really really difficult i think we were very lucky because when we were going through both types of treatments so ovulation induction and when we did ivf the following year um when we did those it was the time of year where we had a lot of other stuff going on um especially with ivf because we it was the, that waiting period was over my 30th birthday so um I had lots of things planned with like lots of different people we had like our birthday party because our birthdays are very close together we had a joint 30th um so I, I was we were very lucky that we had lots of stuff to keep us busy during that time um and that's the best advice I could give is like try and keep yourself busy and keep yourself doing things so that you're not constantly thinking about it or constantly like analyzing every little thing that you feel um you are obviously going to completely do that like i still did i was like oh i felt like this today does this mean this or like oh i felt like this today does this mean this but um yeah just try and keep yourself as busy as possible during that time it can be kind of difficult to plan things because like when you're going through treatment you don't know exactly when like that's going to happen or that's going to happen um but as soon as you can you do know i would just say keep yourselves really busy do stuff together but don't like necessarily like talk or focus on that fine so try and use those two weeks as an excuse to just be you without treatment for a little while um and go out together go on dates go to the cinema go to like the zoo obviously it's a little bit more difficult to do any of that stuff right now um but just try and keep yourselves really busy and keep yourself distracted during that time that's the best advice i can give you okay another question which was asked a lot and i think i will end up writing a post about this because there's so much that could be said and so many people were asking this question um but yeah people were generally asking advice for family members or friends um <laughs> yeah it's a difficult one because there were some things that some people did where i was like yeah okay cool and other times i was like oh no so i can give advice on like things not to say or like not to do and i can obviously say like this is what helped like me or this is what i found helpful but obviously everybody is different so i think if you know somebody who's going through it or about to go through it maybe just sit them down and have a conversation with like right i want to make sure that i can be there for you but tell me what you don't want me to do did you ever feel like giving up <laughs> no there were like times when I was, especially the third round of ovulation induction, there were moments where I was just like, I'm really tired of this, I don't want to do it anymore. Um, or I was just like, I'm so fed up of like not knowing what the outcome is going to be, like whether or not we're going to have a baby. And there was like, oh, I'm just so tired and I'm so bored of it all. Like you do get that feeling, but there wasn't a point where I was like, actually, I can't bother, I'm going to give up now. I do think that if off if the first round of IVF hadn't worked and we'd have gone through like a couple more rounds I think maybe if we'd done like three rounds of IVF by that point I might have turned around and said I just I can't keep doing it because it's a lot like treatment in itself is a lot then there's all of like the emotional side of things and when you've been going through it for a number of years it gets to that point where you're like I need some closure I need to know I need to just draw a line under it so that I can get that closure and I can move on with my life and um I remember when we got our 
suddenly in period for IVF I felt like this massive weight had lifted because I was like we're finally gonna know we're gonna get like that yes or no and by the end of this that will be the end that'll be it so for me I was always gonna be like maybe after like three rounds of IVF seeing on what like the doctor said I probably would have been like that's it now like I'm kind of done now I, I don't think I can deal with it anymore <laughs> I don't think I can do anymore um because it is also a very physical strain on your body treatment wise as well um so I think at that point I would have said I'm done um but I don't feel like that would have been giving up I feel like that would have been the natural place to stop and say we've done everything that we can do um I don't think if we'd have gone through everything that we had been through and then gone through IVF and it didn't work I don't think anybody would have said to us oh you you just gave up I think it would have just been like you you did your best you did everything okay and I think that we would have just needed to like draw a line under it and be like that's it we're moving on now um okay so this was a really good one so it was like how did you handle work with time off for checkups and things so yeah when you are going through treatment you have a lot of checkups so um especially in like the weeks when you're doing your injections um if you do that kind of treatment obviously um you tend to go back you go you go in and then you start doing your injections then a week later you go for another check and after that you go in like every two or three days for a the next week or two depending on how long your cycle ends up lasting for um so it's it's a lot of like time that you have to go to a clinic um and unless you have one that's close to you then you know it can take up a lot of time our closest clinic is about 20 minute drive away so that's still like a lot of time there and back and then obviously the appointment as well we both told our managers straight up what was happening because we were like we would rather be honest about it um and just say like look this is the situation this is what is going on we there are going to be appointments we'll let you know kind of like as far in advance as we can when they are because again you don't necessarily know until your treatment starts when your appointments are necessarily going to be um, and with IVF like you don't know when your extraction date is going to be which you need like two days off for um, until like a few days before so it is all very last minute so obviously if you're not comfortable telling your, your manager or your boss that you're going through this I know especially from a female point of view there's still some stigma in offices and work around like oh well I'm trying to have a baby um, and managers might be like oh well if you're trying to have a baby maybe I won't put you up for that promotion or maybe I won't give you this and I know there are definitely some offices and things that kind of think like that even though they shouldn't um I was very very lucky I have a really good relationship with my manager she's fantastic she was very very understanding the whole way through the company that I work for is a very flexible company as well in terms of um it's like you, you kind of do your hours and you just as long as you do your hours and you do your work then it's fine and I work from home so they're a very good com they're a very good company in terms of that but for us the way that we dealt with it is we were just very upfront and honest with our managers and our companies and just said like look this is the situation this is what we're going to be doing this is what's going to happen as soon as we know we'll obviously let you know and we can obviously make up any time um it was more time for me obviously than it was for Adam because he didn't have to come to every single appointment um, whereas I have to be there for every single appointment um, but yeah it's for us it was just keeping them as in the loop as we possibly could so that they knew um, and tried to manage our work as best we could around that as well it's not necessarily easy especially if you don't have a good relationship with your manager um, but that's how we did it basically um, okay I'm dreading the injections how did you handle them had a couple of people asking me about the injections and like how I found them. <laughs> so I've no I wouldn't say I'm scared of needles, but I've never liked them. Like I don't when I go for like vaccines, I just never I always look the other way. I don't look when they do them. When I get blood taken, I do not look and I still don't look at either of those things. <laughs> but the injections I did end up doing myself. When I started when we started, I was like, I can't do them, Adam, you're gonna have to do them for me. And then there was one day where he couldn't do it so I had because he had to go early or whatever because you have to have them by a certain time in the day and uh, so I had to do it myself and um it was weird like 
even just Adam doing them for me was kind of weird and I know he found it really weird as well um but I actually found it better doing them myself because I felt like I had a little bit more control over it I knew what I was doing I could be like there were days where I would like put it in a certain area and be like no nope, that's a bit too painful I'm moving it to the other side whereas if Adam was doing it it would have been like in I'd be like oh, that's, that's, I don't like it um so I just felt like I had a little bit more control when I was doing it myself I honestly really didn't find them that bad um I was dreading them as well I was just a bit like oh my god I really don't want to do this but you get them in like a pen so you put the needle on every day and then it's literally just like a button on the end that you push and I found that a lot easier to do because later on in IVF you had actual there was one treatment or drug that I had that was like an actual syringe that you had to like push the plunger um, and the needle that was on that was a lot it was different and it was a lot harder to do those injections than the normal ones that I did through like ovulation induction and IVF as well so um yeah you have to do it so it's one of those things where you're like I have to do it so I just need to get on and do it the first couple are obviously a little bit weird and you're there like oh I don't know I don't know and you just have to like psych yourself up to do it um, but once you've done it like a couple of times it's honestly really not that bad um, I would say do them yourself because I feel like I mean you might be different from me but I like my control over everything so I preferred having that myself um, so I would say do it yourself because I just feel like it's probably easier um, yeah I think it's just it's one of those things like I don't like needles, I still don't like, since I've been pregnant I've had two vaccinations, I've had copious amounts of blood taken like, and I still don't watch those things being done but I quite happily was injecting myself like, like there was nothing going wrong and by the time I got to IVF I was like I'm old hat at this now, it doesn't really matter, I was just doing it and I was fine and it wasn't really an issue so yeah, obviously the more you do it the more you get used to it, it's just getting over that initial hurdle I think of the idea of injecting yourself but it's honestly not that bad it's not super painful you don't really get a lot of bruising or anything obviously if sometimes you can it depends on how you react like there were some sites where I got bruising some sites where I didn't get bruising um so yeah it's it's up to you um right okay so <laughs> this one is definitely an interesting one so it's do you feel do you think you feel differently about your pregnancy having gone through treatment than you would if you hadn't gone through treatment yes um definitely and I feel like again this is a bigger topic that I could talk about for a long long time and I actually I think nobody really talks about this and I don't think I've ever actually spoken about this to anybody either um but yeah 100% I think I feel completely differently about my pregnancy because I've been through all of that than I would have done if I hadn't um and I think mean, when you find out that you're pregnant after all of the treatment you obviously you're so so happy and I did feel like a oh, weight was lifted but it was also like please don't let this go <laughs> because like we finally have it and you do spend those first like three months just like worrying about every single little thing and I'm sure you do with like a normal pregnancy as well anyway but yeah I was just worried about every single little thing and I think even now like I'm when I'm filming this I'm just coming up to 29 weeks um I think when you see this I'll be 30 weeks but um even now I feel sometimes like I'm just waiting for something to happen or waiting for something to go wrong I feel like in my head it's still not real because we wanted this for so long because we were waiting for it for so long um I feel like there's something in my head that's still waiting for it to not happen which is obviously not the right attitude to take but you also can't change how you feel but I do feel like for me I'm still waiting for like something like that to happen um obviously touch wood wood so wood yeah good touch wood nothing does um and I'm feeling good right now and everything is going really really well and obviously I'm very very excited um but yeah I think I'm still waiting for something to happen where, where it's like you know it's actually not happening because again I feel like in my head it's still not happening because it hasn't happened for the last three years when we were trying um so yeah I do still think that sometimes I think it's very hard to not think like that when you've been through treatment to get to this point um 
And I think as well, like, it's trying to train your brain to be okay now. <laughs> um, I went to my brother and his girlfriend's baby shower back in January, I think it was now. Um, so we'd only recently told everybody, I think we'd literally told people that week that we were pregnant. Um, and it was very strange going to a baby shower and not having to, like, build up my barriers and build up my walls and, like, psyching myself up to be okay to go because that's the experience that I've had with baby showers before the only baby showers I've really been to have been ones that I've organized whilst I was going through treatment or like big things had happened and I was having I've been tested for stuff or we were waiting for like our funding to come through or something like that so going to a shower where I didn't have to like feel like that it was very strange because I was on autopilot to like protect myself mentally and I didn't need to do it so it's trying to like train the brain to not it doesn't need to do that anymore um so that was kind of weird and that was like unexpected as well at the time but um but yeah I do think you do feel differently and I think others around you feel differently about it as well uh, because they know like what you've been through and they've been through it with you so yeah I think it you I think it would be weird if you didn't feel differently okay that is it thanks to my neighbour saw has been going for the last three weeks. I didn't warn anybody. It's very annoying. Just saying. But yes. So I'm going to wrap that up now. But yeah, I hope this was answer some of those questions. Um, if you have any more, obviously always come and find me on Instagram or like put comments below. Happy to answer any questions. Um, but yeah. Like I said, if this is a good video for you, make sure you give it a big thumbs up. And um, I will see you all again very soon. Bye.